good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'll wait a few minutes. Make sure everybody gets on. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I know that uh, this is uh, this is different for for a lot of us uh, during this time. Uh, for uh, just a few more weeks, I think we will be uh, be pre-record or be recording, doing my sermons, my Wednesday sermons for you um, during the Wednesday morning hour, about ten. I know I'm a little late. I was trying to uh, trying to set my iPad up to do uh, YouTube, my phone to do <coughs> Facebook, but anyway. Run a little behind, but uh, for the next few uh, few weeks, going to do it this way. Uh, continue to do it this way. Pastor McKenzie's they still they have they are using the sanctuary uh, for youth service, and we're broadcasting that live for those kids that uh, for those youth that can't make it and uh, and be here uh, in person. Uh, and uh, that way, you get to you get to see what happens in youth service. I know this Sunday night. We are having our family night service in the sanctuary, and uh, uh, basically, Pastor Greg and his crew, they're going to be doing a kid's service, and man, I am excited about this. I, I am, it's been a long time since I've been in kid's church, and uh, I am super, super excited about what they have lined out for us, and so, uh, just a few things you can do for me. Uh, I, I've noticed as as I look through our Facebook page, uh, there's a lot of of you, a lot of our church people that are not uh, that have not liked our page, and so if you would take time to like our Facebook page, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe to this to the YouTube page, uh, share this video, share uh, share the the videos that we post, so uh, it can get out there and people can see. Because if they don't catch it on live, then they they failed to miss it, and uh, I know that somebody last week had mentioned, hey, I didn't know you had done uh, a Wednesday morning service or sermon, and so, uh, so yeah, so just take time to, to like our page, our HFA page, take time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then share the videos uh, or any kind of link that we put up, any kind of uh, uh, notice or uh, event that we're having. Uh, just take time to share that with everybody as well. I know that they're, uh, you know, in spite of everything that's going on right now uh, with the COVID-19, with the virus uh, that's happening, uh, we're still having a good number that comes to church on Sunday morning. And I, that, that is exciting to me. We've had several new people, uh, new families that have been coming. And uh, despite everything that's going on, uh, even with the guidelines that we have in place and the guidelines that we have to have in place, everything's posted on the door when you come in and know that everything is being sanitized and cleaned before you get here. And uh, though, uh, you know, we recommend masks, they are not uh, mandatory. We're not going to go around and say, hey, put your mask on. Uh, but just things like that. Be, you know, every other pew is, uh, is blocked off for your safety and the safety of those around you. And... Uh, Please don't take it the wrong way that we're doing this for meanness or, or anything like that. We're doing it to keep you safe and so we can con keep, continue to keep our doors open. And so uh, please do your part. We're going to do our part to make sure everybody stays safe. And uh, <clears throat> it, this will be over. This will be over. And I, I believe we are going to be uh, at a better place. Uh, I believe God is doing something great in our church, doing something great in your life and wants to do something even greater, greater than the past. Uh, so please, uh, please be aware of all that on our Facebook page. If you will take time, Pastor McKenzie uh, posted some notifications, some events that are coming up. Uh, I know this is Wednesday, so two of those events have already happened. Bible study, Sister Sherry's class, Bible study class. Um, have resumed their schedule and they, but they will be meeting under the pavilion under the pavilion outside I know it's hot uh, but we have some uh, 
new ceiling fans that really keep the wind blowing. And uh, so if you're interested in Bible study, you can uh, be there whenever there. It's announced. You just had it Monday night, so I think it skips a week, and then they'll have it again. But if you have any questions, you can contact her. And uh, last night we had a women's uh, just get together, just fellowship at the pavilion again outside, uh, maintain you know trying to do our social distancing, and uh, so just just be aware of those things that have happened and that will continue to. We will continue to post things on our Facebook page and announce them on Sundays. And then tonight, of course, right now, we're uh, my, my part, my sermon this morning. And then tonight, youth service will be at 7 online at, on Facebook and YouTube. So if you have a student, uh, have them in front of your TV, in front of your camera, your computer, whatever you watch on, uh, watch that as well. And then Sunday, this Sunday, the 19th, Sunday morning, we will be honoring our graduating seniors. And uh, so uh, Pastor McKenzie has reached out to those and uh, those that will be participating. And so there will be a table set up in the foyer if you would be interested in bringing a card uh, with some money. You know, every, every, every kid that graduates, every student that graduates, they always like that money. And I, these students this year have, uh, this has not been a very, typical uh, not at all this has been a very strange year and they've missed out on a lot of things and just this last Sunday night they were able to to walk have graduation but they were only allowed to have so many people come with them and so everybody couldn't go and uh, which was it was sad uh, it was a letdown but I know that they are super excited super rejoiced that they have officially walked and gotten their diplomas and uh, so that, that happened last this last Sunday night. So this Sunday, the 19th, that morning service, we will be recognizing them and honoring them in our morning service. And uh, so we have, uh, there will be, <clears throat> I know there's two, three, uh, Faith Barnett, Crystal Blalack, and Sarah Sharp, which will not be here. So we will be honoring two this Sunday morning, Crystal Blalack and uh, Faith Barnett. So. Uh, be aware of those. Also, um, this Sunday night at 5 will be our uh, family night, our kids service, and I think we are going to have something fun at the end. Uh, we're going to try to do snow cones for everybody. Uh, we'll have our, get our snow cone machine out and we'll make uh, snow cones uh, after the service. So, come expecting to have fun and uh, a snow cone afterwards. So anyway, hey, I am, um, I was talking yesterday morning about, we're going to get into the Word. Now, if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn with me to the book of John, chapter 21. Uh, if you if you have your YouVersion Bible app, uh, Pastor McKenzie has uh, placed a video on prior to this uh, on how to get to the events and uh, <clears throat> So, if you need to check out that video, go check that out. Come right back. But you can go to your YouVersion app, open it, and then uh, uh, hit the More button in the bottom and click Events. If you're not in the Hector area, all you have to do is hit in Search. If you're in the Hector area, it will automatically pop up. But if you are not in the Hector area, you go to uh, Search and you type in Hector First Assembly, and uh, then that event will pop up. Then all the notes will be in there events, uh, uh, let's see what else is in there, announcements, uh, giving online, uh, all those stuff is in there, so please uh, find that. You can also friend us uh, on the Bible app, uh, it's at HFA or Hector First, and uh, you can also find me, I'm Pastor Shannon on the version app, and uh, anyway, it's just a thing that I, I love. I, I need my Bible app. Every morning I do my devotions on there and I read my word. And uh, so it's a great thing. If you're not into it, get into it. It's good stuff. Good stuff. So, amen. So that I was talking about yesterday morning on the Wake Up Hector. Uh, I don't know. God's been dealing with me. Been just throwing stuff in my face. Been just rolling. And just, I, all I keep thinking about or reading about and just, I'm reading this book called Simply Jesus right now, and man, is it just, uh, it's just a awesome book that just details that you never, maybe you never really think about about Jesus, 
and in the in my word now I'm just I'm reading the Bible through in 90 days and and so uh, today I, I've read uh, Philippians and uh, uh, I don't remember where else but anyway the last I'm, I'm in getting close to the end of the New Testament now and uh, I'm, I'm I'm on day 85 I think and uh, but anyway 86 I don't know anyway but the uh, the it seems like everything that I'm reading or studying or you know preaching uh, today on on, on Peter, uh, you know we've been talking about the prayers of Jesus on Sunday and and uh, so it seems like everything is revolving around Jesus and revolving around Paul or Peter the disciples and and what they what they did and what they were able to. Uh, Accomplish as as men of God, followers of Jesus, and and uh, you know I, I want to today. I want to, I want to start. Uh, I want to start. I don't, I don't know if I would call it a series, but uh, oh, but just for the next few weeks, I want to look at people in the Gospels, uh, not necessarily a disciple, uh, but people that 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 they talk about in the. Uh, in the Gospels, and I want to I want to look at how I want to look at their breakthrough. I want to look at the situations that they were in and how Jesus, how they how they were delivered and and, and experienced a breakthrough in their life. And I know that right now there may be some of you, there may be a lot of you that uh, that are experiencing something that is. Uh, Something very horrific in your life, something hard, something discouraging, and you feel like there's no end in sight. I've been there. I've experienced those type of days, those type of moments, those type of years, and there is a breakthrough coming. But there's some things that we have to do to make sure that we're in a place to receive that breakthrough. If, we, if we're if we not where we need to be in our relationship with God, we're going to fail. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute. We're going to fail. We are going to mess up in life because we're human. There is nobody perfect that has ever been on the face of this earth except Jesus Christ. And we have to remember that. But being where we need to be in our relationship with the Master, so when He provides a correction in our life. We we see it, we understand it, and we can turn and with the assistance of him and his help and have a breakthrough in our life, in our in that moment in our life. So today I want I want to talk about you know we're, we're going we're going to highlight four. We're uh, not today, today right so I guess it is is a series, but I titled it Breakthrough. Today we're going to look at Peter and uh, I want you to understand, I want you to know something, that there is never a life too far gone. That the all-sufficient, forgiving Savior can help and find you and turn your life around. Provide you the breakthrough. There's no life too far gone. I have seen it. I know people that have been in, in situations, in, in a life that nobody could ever see them coming through or coming out on the other side. But today, they are experiencing a turnaround in their life. In their life. And so, uh, today, today I want to, uh, uh, I just want, I want, I want to talk about in John chapter, it seems like I've been in John a lot here lately. Uh, I want to uh, John chapter 21 John chapter 21 21 and verse we'll start reading in verse 7 John 21 and verse 7 uh, alright I'm going to read out the New King James Version today uh on the Bible app, it's all noted in the New Living Translation. 
Um, we got a message this week. Now, this is just something you may not be, you may think, well, man, they're just doing all kinds of new stuff at Hector First and, and stuff that I'm not really comfortable with. But uh, I was told Sunday morning after the after I we had showed the video about how to get on the Version app and all the, the sermon notes are in there. Uh, Sunday afternoon, I received a message from somebody and said, the notes that you placed, that's where it's at. Because my big kids sat there with their phones and they followed you word for word, uh, scripture by scripture, and they were paying attention like they've never paid attention before. So, hey, you know, whatever we can do to make a difference in somebody's life, that's what we're going to try to do. It's still a word. We're still at church. And uh, I, I'm excited about some of the things that God is dropping in our lap and helping us. And, and those people that have, that brought this to my attention, I know it was Keith Stanick and Jacob. Uh, Keith Stanick told Jacob Coughlin. Jacob Coughlin told me. And so uh, between us three and Pastor McKenzie, we've been trying to figure it out and trying to get it done, get it happen. And uh, it's on there. So, hey, I like it. And I, it, it takes a little time to put it in there. But I want you to have access to the notes. And uh, so... There they have it. So in John chapter 21, I want to start reading in verse. It's a story you all know. It's a story we all know so well. But in John chapter 21, verse 7 starts. It says, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, and he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it. And he plunged into the sea, but the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, about 200 cubits. And I figured that that's about 100 yards. It says, they came in, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had, had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid upon it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went and dragged the net to the land, full of large fish, 153. And that just, that just amazes me right there. I mean, they took time to set and count exactly 100. I mean, count the fish in the net, and it was 153. It wasn't 150. It wasn't 200. It was 153. And it says, uh, And although they were so many, the net was not broken. And Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of them, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? For they knowing, for knowing that it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. And he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Heavenly Father, I pray that today, this sermon, whether they're watching live right now, or Lord, they're watching at a later time, maybe they're going to watch, watch, watch it on their lunch break, maybe they're going to watch it before they go to bed. But Lord, I pray that you would use these words and, and, and to penetrate wherever they are, their homes, their lives, and let them know, God, that you are the God of the breakthrough. That you are the God of the breakthrough and that you bring us out of situations and out of just out of junk in our lives. And you provide a breakthrough into that moment that you have designed and created for us. God, I pray for every life, every individual. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Take time to like, like our page and share this video. I know that I had a lot of preliminary stuff going on, but that's okay. You got to get the word out. You got to get the announcements all done. <clears throat>
So we read about Peter and how he really, I mean, he just messed up. Peter just messed up. He royally failed by denying Christ. Now we can go back and we can read just a few just a few chapters over where you know Jesus is telling him that he is going to deny him, and Peter's like, "There is no way." that I'm going to deny you. There's no way. I mean, Peter was very adamant in the way that he was expressing to, to his friend, to his Savior, to Jesus, that there is no way that I am going to deny you. But he messed up. But he messed up. And he did. He did exactly what Jesus had told him that was going to happen. He denied Christ. But here we are. Here we are. You know we, the scripture we read. Here we are. They're on the boat in the middle of, of, of the water, and and uh, they see Jesus on the on the shore. And, and just just I'm not going to get into great detail about the scripture. We could tear this apart. We could talk about everything about it. But I want I just want to focus on on the mess up that Peter did, the, the mess up that he had in life in that moment and what was about to unfold, what was about to happen. Peter had royally messed up by denying Christ, by denying his friend. And here, all of a sudden, he's standing on a beach in front of him. And Jesus didn't take that time. I mean, this is... He didn't take that opportunity to scold him, to beat him down, to uh, just to minim, just to just beat him down, I guess, for what he had done, for messing up. But instead, Jesus offers forgiveness and restoration. You see, we all struggle and we all fail every single day of our lives. I know it's it's my goal. You know, I can't say that for everybody else, but it's my goal every single day to be what God has called me to be, to be the, the pastor, to be the man of God, to be the father, to be the husband, to be what God has designed and created me to be in this moment of my life. It's my goal. It's my, my everyday passion. I strive to be what God wants me to be. But I will struggle. I will fail. But the struggles that we experience on in life, the struggles that we go through, it is nothing more than evidence and proving that we desperately need Jesus in our life. He's the only answer. He's the only way that can bring us through. As Christians, many times we fear that we will not measure up or uh, to please God. Measure, measure up or even please God. Let me rephrase it like that. This kind of thinking can entrap us and make us feel stuck. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever just felt stuck? Have you ever felt like your relationship with God is just in a place where you're just in a rut? Or you're, you're actually stuck. You're in that rut and you're, the wheels are spinning, but you are not gaining ground in anything in your life. Sometimes we, that the reason and the purpose that the, why we're that way is because we have allowed the fear of not measuring up to being what God has called us to be. This account of Peter's restoration can give us hope, can give you and can give me and everybody around us hope. We find that God is not measuring us up, but he has saved us from having to measure up. Let me say that again. We find that God is not measuring us up, but he saved us from having to measure up. There's no way I can be what God is or Jesus is. There's no way I can even get to that level. I can never measure myself up to him, but he saved me to keep me from having to do that. I'm going to do what I can, what I've been called to do. You should do what you've been called to do no matter what it is. No matter what you've been through, 
You see, I, I, I'm a firm believer that you go through things in life and you are better for it. And you're able to help somebody in turn with what a situation may be in their life. Peter here is at the end of his rope. I'm sorry, my, uh, my mouth is super dry. Peter's at the end of his rope right here. He knows he messed up bad, badly. He is in, he's just, and, and I'm sure that it is just eating him up on the inside. It would me. It would me. It was, I mean, knowing that Jesus, you know, Jesus said this is going to happen and I'm denying it and then yet it did just the way that Jesus had told him. But, you know, look at the story. No sooner than he had finished insisting that he would not, he did it. And how he denied, denied knowing him. And even, even, you know, each one of the Gospels has, you know, has this story in it. Each one of the Gospels talks about it, but I, th I think it's I think it's Matthew, Matthew and Mark. They state the fact that Peter called down curses upon himself after the after the after the rooster crowed the last time. It says he even after he no after I'm sorry after he denied him the third time he called down curses upon himself. He knew immediately. He was filled with shame. He was filled with hopelessness. Peter, at, the, at that point, Peter goes back to what he knew. And that was fishing. Feeling like he had betrayed his Savior. Feeling like, I mean, knowing that he had messed up. He went back to what was familiar with him. What would you do? How do you act? How do you react when something like this happens in your life? Do you, you know, when you feel like you've let God down, when you, uh, when you, I don't know, it, I don't know what it may be. If it's, if it's alcohol, if it's drugs, if it's pornography, if it's a, a, a marriage, whatever it may be, when you feel like you've messed up, do you go back to something that's familiar? Do you go back to something that was that was uh, uh, that what you did prior to this, or do you turn and look to God and say, "Father, forgive me, but help me in this moment"? You see, Peter in in in, in the text in verse seven. In verse 7, it says, Now Peter hears the voice of Jesus. He, he was never one to hold back. It says he puts on his coat and he swims to shore where Jesus is. He's in a boat. And it says, you know, I see what the King, the New King James says they were how many cubits? They were they were about 200 cubits away from the shore. And and it's about a hundred yards. 100 yards is a long, that's a long ways. That's a long ways. They were in the boat. They were in safety. They were secure there. They had a, a means of getting to the shore. But Peter Peter recognized, hey, that that's Jesus. That's my breakthrough right there. And instead of waiting and, and with the security of knowing that, yeah, I'll get there. Just, it's going to take me some time. We're going to have to, we're going to have to get the fish in. We're going to have to row. We're going to have to get there. But no, Peter uh, he it says he he rises up. He puts on his coat because he had taken off to get to work. It says he put it on and he swam to shore. Now I know that uh, uh, you know swimming sometimes even in even in, in long pants or a long shirt or or even the coat you can see it in movies how difficult it is and people can drown because they don't they're not free to move and they're not free to to swim. But it says Peter put it on. And he swam to shore, not way. He knew that that was his breakthrough. He knew that he had to get to the shore as soon as he could. He had to get to the master as soon as he could. And so he jumped from the boat and swam to the shore. Now, it doesn't say 
it doesn't say how long he was there before the boat got there and uh, you know swimming with all his clothes on they might have it might have been a pretty close race to get to the shore but Peter gets to where he wanted to be now now let your imagination run right here here we have Peter who had denied Christ even in, in, in one of the in one of the Gospels it said and I'm, it may have been Matt Mark where it says that that as soon as he denied him that last time he was at a place where he could see him and G is like him and Jesus had made eye contact and he knew the conviction the the letdown the beatdown began on the inside for himself so they, that was Peter that was then here they are they're they're meeting on the shore Peter swims, he gets to the shore, and there he stands in front of Jesus, him and Jesus. Think about the awkward moment. Think about that situation. Have you ever been in an awkward situation with someone that you, or have you ever had an, uh, an awkward encounter with someone earlier in the day and then later on that afternoon you run into them what do you say who starts the conversation I mean you can think of a child who slams the door in front of their parents and runs out the house mad but knowingly has to come home and for dinner later that later that night and that awkward moment or a boss that has to uh, get on to an employee and then they run into each other later at the hardware store, at the grocery store. Or maybe even a spouse that blows up at the house and yet knowing they have they they are they they're their husband and wife and they have to inter they're gonna in have to interact later in the day. They live together. Peter finds himself in a similar situation when he encounters Christ. When he encounters when he encounters Jesus, the one, the one who he betrayed. Who started the conversation? Who starts the conversation? What would Jesus say? What would Peter say? You know, can you think about, you know, Peter swimming to shore and maybe maybe rolling over in his mind, well, what am I going to say? What am I going to say when I get there? What's he going to say to me? What's it going to be like when I stand, when I get up out of the water and I'm dripping wet? What's it going to be? And then all of a sudden, Peter, it's there. It's there. Peter's standing in front of Jesus. He's dripping wet. He's feeling all of the, the guilt, the shame, the brokenness, the dysfunction in his life, the discouragement that he feels. There Peter stands dripping wet in front of Jesus. Was Jesus' first words a scolding? Was it a beat down? Did Jesus shove his finger in Peter's chest and, and, and give him the what for? Did he give him that parental posture and rebuke? Like I've been very disappointed in you. You know that look. You know that look. I've given my kids that look like I, you know, when they were younger, you give them that look of disappointment, like you need to be quiet right now. There's a funny little story about that on the side note. Megan knew what the look meant. Ethan was like, what, Dad? What are you looking at me like that for? You know, right? And no matter who we were, were with or where we were, just, you know, that's just that look. Every kid knows that look. Knows that look. Did Jesus give Peter that look? Did he give him the look of disappointment? In verse 10, in verse 10, Jesus instructs his disciples to get, get, get the fish that you just caught. Get the fish, bring it here. Knowing that he's already got fish and bread on the fire, 
And then in verse 12, Jesus asked them to join him to eat the breakfast that he has prepared for them. So he gives them fish, gives them bread, gives them something to eat. The Bible doesn't record if there was a conversation or if there was an awkward silence. You know, I, I, I know that. You know, you're reading the scripture and you like to think sometimes that this is how it all played out there, that they didn't leave out any detail and, and all that. But, they, you know, there's some, there's some details that probably get left out, you know, some little side conversations. Or, because all the gospels, all four gospels are different. It's coming from different guys. They're going to a different audience. They're different perspectives. So was there an awkward silence? Was there something that wasn't said? Or was there a conversation? And the only thing that we know, I mean, you look at verse 13. We do know that Jesus served them breakfast. He served them fish and he served them bread. Then after a, a possibly silent meal together, maybe, you know, I can, I can see this. If you have tension at home and uh, maybe... Uh, maybe your kid brought home a bad grade on a report card or whatever, and they and they just they just sit there and they eat without looking up at anybody, without without making eye contact with anybody. Maybe they've got their head down, you know, don't make eye contact, don't look them in the face, you know, keep your head down. They won't say nothing. This will be over with. So was that you know? And this is my I, th I you know you know me by now that I have a. I have a imagination that runs away sometimes, but the possibility of a, of a silent meal together, I don't know. But I do know that Jesus, Jesus asked Peter in verse 15. Doesn't say anything, any other conversation. It's like he just looks at Peter and says, hey, Peter, do you love me? There was no rebuke. There was no finger in the uh, in, in, in the chest of Peter. There was no beat down that happened. All it was, do you love me? Do you love me? So far, Jesus has done all the talking. From the interaction, it, it becomes clear that Jesus has forgiven Peter. Is this a breakthrough? Is this, would you consider this a breakthrough for Peter? I would. Absolutely. I mean, we see in Acts chapter 2, just a few, just the next book, a few chapters over in the book of Acts, you see Peter preaching to thousands and them giving their life to Christ, becoming Christians. The awesome reality is that Jesus does not give Peter a beat down or a discouraging word or the what for over his obvious failures. Peter denied Christ to three different people and the people around them. Denied them, fulfilling what Christ had told him. He had obvious failures, but he, Jesus here gives him grace and recovery. Do you love me? He gives him redemption and reconciliation. He gives him a second chance. Rescue from himself. Because you know as well as I know, Peter has beating himself up on the inside because I've done it to myself. He beats himself. He's beating himself up on the inside. He gives him a second chance and a rescue from himself. Rescues him from his discouragement and from his failure. A breakthrough. You have never gone too far that God and Christ will not bring you out. Peter's sin had already beat him down. And right now he needs a Savior to pick him up and to put hope back into his life. Right now, do not let your sin, do not let your discouragement, do not let the things in your life that are holding you back beat you down. All you need is a Savior to pick you up and to put hope back into your life. All you need is hope. All you need is Christ in your life 
and to put you back on the road for a great future in him. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for a hope and a future. Not for good, not for bad, but for a hope and a future. God has a plan for you. Sometimes we just have to get to the point where we surrender, completely surrender our life to him where he has control and he puts the hope, he puts everything that we need, the grace, the, the, the glory of God back in our life where we can be what God wants us to be. You are never too far gone that God will not bring you back out, that he won't bring you back and place you on the rock. He will not let you get too far. You cannot be in a place too far gone where Christ cannot forgive you and redeem you and bring you home. Remember that. We all struggle. We all fail. Not one person is exempt from that. We all fail. We all struggle every single day. But the struggle we experience, it brings, it makes it evident that we need Jesus desperately in our life. We need Jesus desperately in our life. I, I saw a, uh, maybe it's an Instagram post or maybe it's Facebook, I don't remember, but uh, Cersei first has seen me. It's Pastor McKenzie's um, dad. They pastor there. Uh, but they're, they're, I think they're starting a, a series or maybe they're in it. Uh, about Jesus and church, I, I, I'm just there's something going on, and I believe that that he is his his heart's desire is to get his church back to the place where they are in tune with him and depending upon him every single day. We need a breakthrough from the junk in our life, from the from the sin in our life, and sometimes we the sin can be the littlest thing, but it's still sin. And it will keep us from receiving, keeping us from being what God wants us to be for those that are around us. So the struggles and the failing and the failures that we go through in life, it just it's just evident to us that we need Jesus in our life desperately. What or whom do you turn to when you fail? When you fail in life, what do you turn to? Some people turn to binge watching. You know that's a thing now, binge watching. And uh, some I've been I've, I've binge watched a few things. You know, I, I, on on Netflix. When you live in a different country for so long, you don't get the TV. Uh, you just you some days you know when your day's off or it's a rainy day and it's just you don't feel good. You just turn on the TV. And you watch something until you've watched it all. And uh, Susan does. She. Well, I like I watched Lost, the movie, the TV series Lost. It's crazy, just really dumb. But it was I was I was hooked, and so I would watch it. And uh, I even I actually watched it twice, maybe three times. I don't remember. But there was a time when Susan was here in the states for a surgery, and I was I was home and um, on my between teams. I, I would just I watched Lost and. Uh, uh, Binge watching when you're alone, you, you binge watch when you're alone. You, I mean, you find in those things that 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 drown your sorrows or drown your loneliness. And some people do that. Maybe on Netflix or Disney Plus now, uh, you can watch all the Star Wars you want. But some people go straight to their friends who will tell them exactly what they want to hear. Some may even may beat themselves up over the sin that they're in or the mistake that they're in. And they, they, they turn to drugs or alcohol, pornography, suicide, self-dependence, and you know that, that can lead to self-glory. These aren't the answers. Binge-watching Lost or anything on TV, The Office, these are not the answers. Drugs, alcohol, pornography... Um, suicidal thoughts. These things are not the answers. They are just a numbing agent that will numb you in the situation that you're in. The only answer, the only cure for failure is 
to Jesus Christ. It's the only cure. He was enough to save at salvation. And he is enough to forgive us now within our salvation. Do I need to say that again? He was enough to save at salvation. He saved you. He saved you. And then he was enough to forgive you within your salvation. Do you get that? Picture this. And I, I, I'm getting ready to close. Picture this. Here, here, here's, here's Peter. Here's Peter, or here we are. But here's Peter dripping wet with denial in front of Jesus. He's dripping wet with denial, dysfunction, or discouragement. Or maybe all of them. We are completely undeserving and incapable of saving ourselves. Peter was completely undeserving and incapable of saving himself. So get that in your head. Here we are. Dripping wet, standing before Christ, dripping wet with our denial, our dysfunction, and our discouragement. Completely undeserving and incapable of us saving ourselves. But we're standing in front of Jesus. There he is, completely victorious over sin, compellingly gracious, compellingly, compellingly gracious toward our misery compassionately calling us into his amazing love so just because you have this dysfunctional life this discouragement of a life this denial that you're living with you're dripping wet of all of this junk you're standing before him there you are standing before him with all your mess but there he is in all his perfection there he is standing in front of you victorious over sin compellingly gracious toward your misery and compassionately calling you into his amazing love today could be your day Today could be your day for a breakthrough. Just as it was for Peter the day that he re-encountered Jesus on the shore. Knowing, I, can, you, can you just, for a moment, just picture Jesus. I mean, Peter, he, he's, he's allowed this to roll over and over and over and over in his mind. And he sees him. And his first reaction is, I'm, I've got to get to him. I've got to get to my breakthrough. There it is. Peter jumps into the water and he swims to the shore. And when he gets there, you know, it doesn't really say what is the conversation is. But he's standing there. And, you know, maybe he's feeling, he's feeling like, you know, he's dripping wet. And maybe he's, 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 his hair is all wet. And his clothes are soaking wet. And maybe his sandals are, are on. Maybe he had them in his hand. Maybe he lost them in the water in the swim. But he's standing there dripping wet. And he knows that this is my answer. This is what I have to have right now. He's standing there in his dysfunctional self, his discouraged self. And before him stands Jesus victorious over what he had just went through. And he sees Peter in all of his misery. And all he wants to do is hug him. And he says, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. You know, he says that three times, and, and Peter's kind of getting aggravated at him. And, and but Peter's, Jesus is saying, I, "Take care of them. Take care of my sheep." Then, a few chapters over in the Book of Acts, you see Peter preaching to 
thousands. What if in all your dysfunction, in all of your discouragement, standing before God and saying, forgive me, help me. And he embraces you, brings you back into, the, into his love because the breakthrough has to happen because there are people waiting on you. Now I brought it back around to act to to be the one. I brought it back around to be the one because it doesn't matter. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're never going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best and I pray and I hope that you're going to do your best. In your dysfunction and in your in your discouragement, you're standing before him. And he just wants to say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I won. I've defeated sin. I defeated hell. I defeated death. I defeated all of that for you because there's somebody waiting on you. Peter recognized his breakthrough, got his relationship right, and he's kept saying, do you love me? Do you love Christ today? Do you love God? Take, you know, it says, feed my sheep. He's not talking just to, to a pastor. To a pastor. No, he's talking about the people that are lost and without him. That when Peter went and preached the gospel and thousands of people gave their heart and life to God because he surrendered it all. In the midst of all his junk, he said, I love you. I love you. I want to pray for you. When I get through here, when I get back to my office, I want, I'm going to put a connect card into the link, uh, into the comments here. Uh, if you take your time, fill out that comment card. If you have a prayer request, I think there's a spot on there for a prayer request. Uh, it gives me your phone number, your email address, whatever you want to give. That way I can contact you, get in touch with you, pray for you, let you know I'm praying for you. Uh, if you have a need and it's private, it'll stay private. I will not, uh, I will not disclose any needs unless you ask me to. And uh, I just want to pray for you now. If you give your, if you, if you surrender your life to Him today, if you, if you make a commitment, if you recommit to Christ, if you are felt like Peter and you, and all of your dysfunction, that you cannot be what God has called you to be. You need to find that place. Get on your knees before God and say, God, please forgive me of my sin. Help me. Help me in all my dysfunction and in all of my discouragement. You may be in a place right now in your life where you need a breakthrough. You need a miracle in your life. He is the miracle worker. He's the miracle worker, and he will do it. For you, if he did it for Peter, I mean, we could. I mean, I'm going to talk about some more in the next few weeks on Wednesdays. But uh, share this video, like our page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, whatever you need to do. If you know somebody that's that needs this word today, send it to them. Send it to them. I want to pray for you as you leave today, Father. I pray that your anointing. Uh, would just penetrate the hearts and the lives of many. Those that are watching, um, God, I just, I just pray that uh, if they're discouraged, if they're in a place of, of sadness, if they're in a place of addiction, whatever it may be, uh, God, I just, I just pray that you would just, uh, just speak to them where they are. Lord, I pray for those that are fighting uh, situations in their life, whether it's, it's um, families or whether it's a, a an issue a health issue whatever it may be lord you know where they are you know exactly what they need and so i pray right now that your 